Twenty minutes later. I think I need some more party members. You should add a Disney princess to your party. What? Check this shit out. That could... That could work. Yeah. Oh, God. Eventually... Oh, fuck. Oh, God. Okay, yep. Yeah. Let's... Let's go find some of them. Today's gonna be a bit of a different type of video. my shoot. So, context. I've basically wanted to make this list, or let's say sort of a guide, on how to play a certain Disney characters in D&D. And I've wanted to make a video on this subject for a long time. This, however, is uh, not that video. I am instead making a video on how to play a certain Disney princesses in d and I'm dead inside, but honestly, we don't stop in the face of adversity on this channel. No, Sir Tandarius doesn't stop when he really should sometimes. But I'm here. We already made the video. This is kind of how it happens. So late one night, Snow and I, a fellow DM on my Discord server, sat down and we basically put it all into writing. You heard right. The entire evening spent away on this. Making Disney princesses into D&D characters. What the fuck am I doing with my life? HALT! If you enjoy what I'm doing, make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that business. I'm just sort of in this for the fun of it. Also, a little bit of um, preconcept knowledge that you need for these characters. Basically, you still roll their attacks and their equipment and their money as you would any other characters. These are sort of just guidelines on how to play these characters and what comes in their kits. If the DM has to make any changes to the characters, then please be as courteous as possible, because some of these princesses are really broken. Yes sir, we own Dead Skinned Barbie, we own Old Sharp Tooth Succubus Bilt, we also own Toothless Gape Mouthed Soul Sucking Dwarf. Alright, let's talk about Snow White. Snow White was honestly very easy to figure out. She's a druid. Wow, that was easy. Let's pack it up, folks. Okay, there's a little bit more to it than that from what Snow and I have seen while we were watching Snow White. Snow White has some garbage modifiers. I mean, what the fuck? But some interesting abilities to try and balance them out. With a measly 2 strength, 17 dexterity, 14 constitution, 8 intelligence, and 12 wisdom, but a solid 20 charisma, these mods would be trashing anything but a bard. But once you realize that Snow White is 14 years old, what? These stats are fairly impressive. Some of her abilities, however, are a little underwhelming. With her strongest abilities being athletics, wild speak, and her infectious friendship, and her weaker ones being water resistant clothing, proficiency in singing, and cooking, playing as Snow White in a campaign would be very difficult. She's really meant to be played as support. With no weapon proficiencies, Snow White is very vulnerable, but her high charisma and dexterity will allow for some very interesting and funny moments overall. I give Snow White a C-. With her lack of combat abilities and her reliance on other team members, it'd be difficult for someone playing as Snow White to shine in a dungeon or a boss fight. But all in all, I'd still say it's fun and a solid enough build to get you through the day.
Snow and I argued for about one hour that Cinderella is actually a warlock, and he still stands by it, but I know better, Snow! From what we could agree on, we ended up on Fae Cleric, and a built one, too. Considering what Cinderella's been put through in her teenage years, her stats are amazing. Just look at this! 16 Strength, 18 Dexterity, 17 Constitution, 18 Wisdom, and another solid natural 20 for Charisma. Now, these stats are a bit hard to believe, but considering Cinderella was tasked with the daily upkeep of an entire chateau, she would have to be, considering the average chateau requires at a minimum 20 people to run the home properly! Sorry, what? What is this? Two maids per floor, one cook with two helpers, one butler, two housemen, and at least that many for outside, gardeners, drivers, livestock handlers, and since most castles were two-story, which means four maids, so in total maybe 20 people, but Tremaine's house is three stories, four if you include the attic, and let's not forget the big fuck-off tower that's also on the property, that's actually actually 25 to 27 people to run Lady Tremaine's chateau. It's a wonder Cinderella's even alive right now! And can we talk about how Cinderella infiltrated a castle in the third movie? Yes! There are three movies! She's actually really good at lying, believe it or not. But, I'm getting sidetracked. Cinderella possesses wild speak, athletics, deception bonus, and an archfey guardian. Cinderella can likely send you to God with her stats alone and dub the whole campaign if the DM isn't looking at her abilities closely enough. I give Cinderella an A+. With strong base stats and a good class and enough stopping power, Cinderella would make an excellent addition to any party. Okay, I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you guys. We had no idea what the hell to do with Aurora. Honestly, because she did nothing during the movie. She gets cursed as a baby, falls in love, cries, gets cursed, and then just sort of wakes up. Like, what do you do with that? Well, here's her stats in class anyways. We went with Fae Sorcerer. Yeah, we really did not have much to work with here. 8 Strength, 13 Dexterity, 10 Constitution, 10 Intelligence, 8 Wisdom, 18 Charisma. With Wild Speak, Enchanted Song, Advantage on Charisma Checks, and Access to a King's Treasury. What the hell? God damn. Aurora gets a C plus, with very little to bring to a team, but money and easy charisma checks. She's not really good for long running adventures, but a good set for a noble build, honestly. Before we start this one, I have to say, Ariel is Snow's favorite. And so I had to rein him in a lot. I mean a lot, like... Oh my god, he has way too much adoration for this princess. But, all in all, we came to a great consensus. Ariel is a bard, and a damn good one too. For the most part, Ariel fills the role perfectly, despite being, well, a fish, but when you look at her abilities and stats, she can really back up the whole party at the drop of a hat. With Song, Lucky, and a sea creature pet, I suggest the shark dog. Or maybe the whale horse. She has a really fun kit, and with 17 strength, 20 dexterity, 20 constitution, 16 wisdom, 7 intelligence, ouch, and 20 charisma, she really shines in the field, but her intelligence stat really holds her back. I mean, god damn, Ariel's stupid. How stupid do you have to be to forget how to write in the sand? I mean, fuck. I give her an A minus. Solid choice with a lot of support options, but man, her intelligence sucks. Bell is an artificer? Okay, not really, but I mean, okay, look, it's complicated. I mean, okay, look, if you put Bell like in front of a Minecraft workbench, could she make any of the devices or machinery that her father made? I sincerely doubt it. Now, can she operate it? Yes, of course, Belle's incredibly smart. And she's lived with her father for years, so I bet you anything she knows a lot about machinery. But making it is an entirely different story, and I've never really seen anything from Belle that would say otherwise. So, we kinda just went down the middle of the road. 
Multi-class artificer sorcerer. Yeah, we kind of cheated with this one, but what else could we do? All right, let's look at those stats. Eight strength, 17 dexterity, 10 constitution, 20 wisdom, 20 intelligence, and 13 charisma. And that's not all you get. Max world knowledge, advantage on first aid, hermit background, and a <laughs> um, a beast of a husband. <laughs> I give Belle a B+. Plus. With good stats and nice abilities, she's a great pick, but sadly lacks many good combat abilities. Ah, ha, ha. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. Jazz brings the heat as a ranger and keeps the momentum going with her stat. Oh. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, those aren't good stats. Okay, her stats are trash, and she only excels at dexterity and charisma. The only reason we say that is because she was able to keep up with Aladdin, who probably has one of the highest dex stats in the entire character line. Well, besides Peter Pan, of course. But, at the end of the day, with a tiger companion, stealth, athletics, smugness, what the f- smugness, and advantage on deception checks, she still poses a great help to the team. Jasmine gets a B- for effort. But not by much. With a lot of benefits and drawbacks, her abilities make up for her stats that suck. The native of the group is actually very painfully obvious. She's a druid of the Circle of Life variety. Wow, so original. But where she lacks originality, she makes up for that in these busted stats. I mean, what the hell, man? You see this shit? 14 strength, 20 dexterity, 20 constitution, 20 wisdom, 17 intelligence, and 13 charisma. So, um, yeah, Pocahontas is jacked to say the least. With Wild Speak, Plant Commune, Loop Bonuses for Forgings, the Tongues ability, and a high bonus to Initiative and Speed, she is set for pretty much anything. And I would give her an A+. With big stats and really good abilities, she could fit into any adventure with ease. I'd keep her in the mid-fight, honestly. Just look at her stats, man. Is it any wonder she's triple S? 20 strength, 20 dexterity, 17 constitution, 16 wisdom, 20 intelligence, and 12 charisma. Mulan, in my opinion, is the most solid combat option here. If the DM is smart, they'll stack the dungeon and hold on for dear life. As a fighter, Mulan's proficiencies are single sword, bow, and artillery. Freaking artillery! The military background is obvious, and with a dragon familiar, and a very very high deception bonus and athletics to boot Mulan sits as our first S character with some of the best frontline damage and a slew of great abilities honestly just pick a top tier pick Mulan and have the time of your life <laughs> Tiana. We have nothing. Honestly, I thought Aurora had nothing until I watched Princess and the Frog. I mean, Tiana's a, a frog ape for most of the movie anyways. So what do you do with that? I mean, I'll tell you what we did with that. We made her a fighter with some spell slots. Man, I don't know! Fucking what do you even do with her? And it kinda sucks, cause Tiana is cool, but Stats are stats. 10 strength, 10 dexterity, 10 constitution, 15 wisdom, 20 intelligence, and 20 charisma. Yeah, her, her stats are kind of crap. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, Chandarius, maybe her abilities make up for this, right? Well, you're only half right, which is just as good as being half wrong. All right, let's look at this. She has savvy, advantage while unarmed. Why? Bonus to looting money and an alligator pet. And... That kind of only just make her barely playable. 
Tiana is B+. It's a very situational build, but at the end of the day, having a few spell slots as a fighter can come in really handy. I can just imagine a few enemies that will just be completely trivialized by this. Bring Tiana in as a ringer and you might just be surprised, just like I was. Die, your scholars! Rapunzel can be played either as a paladin or a cleric, but her killer app is, well, something rather odd. Um, I don't really know how to say this, but yeah, 70 feet of goddamn hair! But, but, if you can get past the whole hair situation, Rapunzel is a very well-rounded build. With 19 Strength, 20 Dexterity, 15 Constitution, 20 Wisdom, 16 Intelligence, and 20 Charisma, she is really built for anything, except the hair, man. We gotta talk about the hair. There are so many uses for what is essentially 70 feet of rope or wool, but you do realize that stealth is no longer an option. I mean, what the hell do you do if you're hiding in a bush? Oh, where'd they go? Oh, hey, did you check that bush with the 70 feet of fucking hair sticking out of it? I mean, okay, look, you get a creative DM, you're screwed. But if you are a creative player, the campaign is your playground. And it gets even more fun with your abilities. With max out to hit with improvised weaponry, advantage on all healing abilities and healing checks, Pascal, of course, needs chameleon companion, Footloose, Hair Whip, and Radiant Hair Energy, demons will be running scared. I give Rapunzel a B plus to S minus. She is a solid character and her abilities make her really fun, but the problem is the 70 feet of hair. Play this by ear and go by who the DM is. If they are cool, S. If they are that kind of DM, play by your boundaries because you know how that kind of DM is. Yeah, you know who you are. Get your raw to suck out of your ass and let people have some fun for once. Merida is ranged cavalry and has some solid abilities and mods to back it up, but that's kind of it. Despite Merida possessing some great skills and mods, she's just sort of vanilla. And what I mean by that is that just about any person with good enough game knowledge of how to level a character and how the game works would be able to make Merida. And it puts me in a strange position of not having much to say about the character. But when all is said and done, Arrow go whoosh. Boy. 17 strength, 20 dexterity, 15 constitution, 12 wisdom, 14 intelligence, and 9 charisma. Add danger sense, bonus to hit with bows on and off the Shire Warhorse. Sentry and deadly shot, I give her a B. Solid. She is just a cavalry character, but she's a very, very powerful cavalry character. If someone else took Mulan, i take Merida. Oh, and ask your DM about having a bear companion. It ends here. Here we go! Moana is a swashbuckler, the likes of Captain Jack Sparrow or Edward Kenway. And, um, that's kind of all she's got. Well, that and the fact that water is basically your plaything, but... Other than that, the only other skill she has is Mariner. She's not really that amazing. Okay, to be perfectly honest, having what is essentially a max level water weird on you at all times and ready to fight is actually pretty lit, but the problem is you kind of need a water source for that first. Unless the DM is really creative, you're not going to find a lot of water inside of a dungeon. 15 strength, 20 dexterity, 20 constitution, 20 wisdom, 16 intelligence, and 16 charisma. Simple, to the point, and easy to pick up. I'd give Moana a B-. Swashbuckler is a grand class, and her stats are great, but she's missing a lot of good abilities. And if there's no water nearby, well, there goes a big part of your kit. And also, if you're not going to be on the ocean, what's the point of being a freaking mariner? Out of your friends, which are you? Truck freak crazy ass. The fire. Rhea is a big, big, 
big combat-oriented princess, and while she shows impressive feats of strength and dexterity, she fails in many non-combat situations. And when it comes to her killer app, she really excels at, oh yeah, is it time to talk about dragons? No! You have to eat your dinner before you get dessert. So, let's talk class and stats. You know what's up at this point. Rhea is a way of the four elements Kinsei monk, and she fucking owns it! With great rounded out stats to complement it, and with the help of a certain companion, you can- No! Stats first. 18 strength. 20 dexterity, 17 constitution, 19 intelligence, 20 wisdom, and 14 charisma. She is another great frontliner, especially with that admittedly cool transforming weapon proficiency she has, giving Bloodborne the side eye I see. So now is it time to talk about- No! It's ability time. With taunting aura, uncanny dodge, danger sense, observant, tough, and um, a, um, armadillo groundhog bug thing? Seriously, what the hell is this thing? And now, it's finally time to talk about the big, bad, dra- Final score. With great abilities, rounded stats, and a really cool weapon type, Raya is S. Really the only other S in the lineup. Perfect for the front line and any party. Okay, finally, let's talk dragons. Sisu is a water element lung dragon, but there's a catch. There's always a catch. The DM has full control over what kind of dragon it is and how you go about getting it. That's right, you don't just get a dragon. There are so many types of dragons out there and too many rules to think about, so it's up to the DM whether or not you start out with one or obtain it from a personal quest, character quest, or whatever have you. The DM will have finals a say on this one. And remember to always respect the DM's ruling. It's just courtesy. Unless they're an asshole, in which case find another group. And that's the whole list. And the tier list looks something like this. Yeah, pretty good. And that is about it. That's all the princesses. Thank you so very much for watching. And I will see you all on the next adventure when we... <laughs> I don't really know. Do I look like a guy with a plan? I'm just doing this for fun, honestly.